<laughs> hey, Ben. <laughs> Let's see. Make sure we... we get, you guys can hear me, right? Hey, Jim, good catch on that uh, st stupid. I was, I was trying to get that out. Uh, what was it? Last night I did that, and then I just forgot to post it, but I, I, did, I didn't check my work. <laughs> so I got to turn on my light. Okay. All hoping that Kathy's doing well. Um, I changed guitars so we can uh, take a sip. <laughs> Oh, Kathy's here. Uh, we'll be listening, uh, but keeping my eyes off the chat. Yeah, you know, we spend so much time looking at computers that it makes it really tough in my hair. Today, I, I'm going to go out in the yard and we're going to cut some hair off. <laughs> um, but I... Uh, um, I think we all we all kind of stare at the screen. I'm on screen all day long, and so many of our jobs are that way. Um, like, sorry about the noise there. Okay. Um, so who do we have? We got Ben. I see. So Jim caught my my uh, <laughs> five four bar in the blues. It's fortunately not on the recording. It's just on uh, the uh, the the image, and I just was trying to get this thing up done and fast and that's what happens when you go too fast that's right what they say measure twice cut once i was cutting twice and measuring once is what i was doing so i apologize for that i actually pinned jim's uh message because or his comment so that everybody can see it because otherwise i'm going to get like 10 more comments saying the same thing hopefully if they see the if they see the pinned comment they'll they'll not they can save their time so um, and Kimberly, if you're here, you're not here yet, but thank you. Uh, a couple of you, David, I think you've done it as well. And I don't see David yet here. Um, but, uh, thanks for doing the, um, David Sillers is here. Uh, but David in Manhattan, um, he sometimes t says, oh, lesson starts here or whatever. And that's helpful. So, um, and you can see the name of the lesson is number 50, 50 days in a row. Can you believe we've been doing this for 50 days? Um, and, uh, some of you have almost been here every single day. Kathy's pretty close. Bruce, you're pretty close to being there every day. Uh, Jim and Bonnie, you've been here as long as I can remember. Roger, you've been around. Art, I've seen you quite a bit. And Ed, you've been around a lot. Uh, AJ. So let's see, we got Keith is here. Tom is here. Good, mo good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. Tom, you're in Europe, I think, right? You're in, uh, uh, Tom Beck. I think you're, are you in... Copenhagen, or uh, I forget where you are. I think you're in Germany, maybe in Germany. Sounds like a German beer. Beck. GR, hey, uh, GR. Good to see you. And David Sillers is here. Uh, Hook, AJ. Yeah, Mark Long. Oh, Mark, well, where are you? Are you uh, in a weird, like in Australia or something where it's hard to catch? Oh, that's right. Beck, Tom, you told me that. Finland, that's right. Yeah, I've I've done some. I uh, have a song on uh, the song. It's not Finland, it's Norway. Um, I did a song with um, Pooh Bear, who's Justin's writer, and uh, it, Justin didn't do the song, record the song, but uh, Nico and Vins from from Norway did. So, okay, you're in Ohio. Okay, so you're you're three hours ahead. So, and then Jan, you're in Holland. Okay, well, Beth and I were in Holland uh, not that long ago, uh, about. A year and a half ago, we were there for, for the holidays, which I love being in Europe during the Christmas season because, man, they just decorate. I mean, they just decorate. I love, I follow um, on Instagram, I follow magical places to travel, which is kind of a depressing thing to follow because you're just like, oh, I want to go there. I want to go there. I want to go there. There's just not enough life to get to all these places. And But in December, they start posting pictures of all these different cities and places at Christmas time. And what they do, light it up. And uh, we just missed Christmas decorations in when we were in Barcelona, but they had hung them all, but they hadn't lit them all. So I was like, oh man, we got to go back to Barcelona during Christmas so we can see it. It would be kind of fun. Um, I know. <laughs> oh, you've done all 50. That's crazy. Um, so anyway, I'm going to show you a little fun little rhythm thing we can do. Also, 
Um, I'm just going to let it sit there and taunt you all, but there's a, a box behind me. Um, you can see it right there. Right there is a box, right? Well, that's hard to point at. Now, I shouldn't look at the screen when I point. Right there. Um, and uh, so that's my... Um, that's, that's my uh, Bode Saltry that I ordered. Uh, trying to spend some money, help some you know, businesses out. Uh, this guy's in um, Nashville, Indiana. Not too far from where I'm from. I've been to Nashville, Indiana. And um, again, every, every city in Indianapolis, Indiana is named for someplace they'd rather be. <laughs> it cracks me up how many, how many cities in Indiana are named for other places. It's just hilarious. But... Um, uh, and, the, you know, that's <laughs> it was my mentality when I lived there. Although I, I love being from there. It's a great place to be from, as they say. Um, but the uh, uh, I also ordering a... It, he had this already ready to go, so they just shipped it out. Um, I have no idea. Oh, it's So Boat Saltery is kind of like an auto harp in some ways that you play with a bow. And uh, so I've never seen one in person. I've never played one. So we're going to unbox it um, at the end of the lesson after the lesson and um oh Dayton okay I have fa I have family in Dayton Ohio my my uh, uncle uncle Bob uh he worked at the uh Wright Patterson Air Force Base he was an aeronautical engineer there so um and then um uh so the 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 Bode Saltry thing is um it's kind of like an auto harp so I'm going to be curious if he detuned all the strings which would be a drag because that means because it's got, you know, it's going to have a wrench, so it's going to be one to one. So I'll open it up and look at it. And if it's not tuned, um, if it's tuned, there may be broken strings. So that was probably if they did loosen the strings, uh, that would be the reason. Um, it took they they shipped at UPS, and for some reason, it took nine days. No, eight days. They shipped it on last Monday, and I got it last night, Tuesday night. I mean, that's just crazy. So, um, but I want to show you this little rhythm trick. Um, and to do it, we're going to have to visualize the E7 chord here. You don't have to be able to play the E7 chord, okay? You just have to be able to visualize it. And then, I'm sorry, well, this one you should be able to play. But this one here, you don't have to be able to play the A7 bar chord. If you can't, it doesn't matter. But you just need to be able to see that it's there. So this is E, F sharp, G, a, the four chord is here. B, the five chord is here. So this shape, you can play with these two fingers. All this time we were playing E7, A7, E7, A7, E7, B7, A7, E7, B7. We could have all that time been playing bar chords. Uh, part of my... Um, part, of, uh, part of what I want you to do, though, is actually try to play chords in the same area. Okay, so for example, if we were going to use, uh, say, this A7 up here, then I'd probably prefer that you use this E7, maybe this B7. Um, but that way, everything's kind of in the same neighborhood for multiple reasons. Like if you're performing, uh, if you're performing in front of an audience, um, you, you don't want to be looking down the whole time, especially if you're singing. Uh, I remember, um, I mentioned it before, um, uh, dang it, he did kind of ragtime music. He wore sunglasses, a white suit, and a hat. And he, I remember he was on SNL, um, and he would and he would put the microphone on a stand, and the microphone would be would be literally like right underneath him, and he'd sit there and sing down like this. Uh, who was that? So this is the lick I want to show you. So it's kind of a little variation on the um, on the Sesame Street thing, right? Okay, so what you're going to do on the E chord, and it's going to be the same thing up and down, but the, the first chord is on the E chord is going to be open. So you play the G string and the B string open like that and hammer on the first fret of this third string. Which also, that by itself is a great lick to play over E chord. So if you're looking for some... You 
can melt the crud out of that. And basically what's happening there harmonically, and there will be no quiz on this, a celebratory sip for the fact that there will be no quiz on this. That's one of the rules, right? Gary, is Gary here? So, and, and Kathy has joined us, but she won't be doing too much chatting because uh, she's trying not to spend too much time looking at the screen, everybody. So, um, everybody's talking to each other. They're all saying hi. Oh, Leon Redbone. Thank you so much. That's who I was thinking of, Leon Redbone. Not Mose Allison, but that's a great guess. Uh, yeah, look up Leon, Leon Redbone. He's a character. He's really, he, he's, I'll tell you, he's one... He's probably probably the first artist I ever saw. You know, I remember the first time I ever saw him, pretty much one of the only times I ever saw him, was on SNL back the first year. And the first year of SNL, which would have been like 73, 74, something like that, maybe 75, he gets on there and he does his thing. And it was the first artist I ever saw that I thought, oh, wait, he invented this persona. That's, is that really who he is? Or, you know, I mean, he may really be that person. It may be exactly who he is. Uh, but it was like, I, I mean, the Beatles were kind of that way, but they were all kind of, yeah, they were kind of made to look alike a little bit early on and everything. But it was one of those times, where, I guess Elton John would have been the same way, where like they really made it important to kind of put forth a, uh, a visual to go along with the, the, the music. And I'll tell you, uh, uh, Paul Anka is actually a really brilliant person, but he said, he said people see or hear what they see. And so, like, that's why he didn't, he wanted his band to all dress up and look and wear suits and everything and uh, and wear shirts. The band gets shirts. If you ever listen to that Paul Anka rant where he, he's like saying, where's Joe? Where's Joe? And it, that's my friend Joe de Blasi, <laughs> who just never went to the after show meetings because he didn't want to be yelled at by Paul Anka. Anyway, uh, but, but Paul Anka, you know, said, said that people hear what they see. And that's really true. You know, the, the more, you, you, obviously you want the music to be quality, but there's a lot of quality music out there. But if you can add another layer to it and it be a visual, and that's really what Leon Redbone did. Um, but that, my point being, he's the only one that kind of does, can get away with that looking down and not acknowledging the audience. And so when you play chords and they're all in the same neighborhood like this, you can really keep your... Keep your lips on the microphone. You can keep your eyes up. Okay, you can uh, you can make eye contact, all that stuff. You can make eye contact with your bandmates, and that. And so, if I were playing up here, I would play you know shapes that were right in the same neighborhood. I wouldn't want to go here and then here and then here and here because I'm gonna have to look at my hands for the most part. Um, especially if you're changing guitars and every guitar is a little different. And okay. So the lick, we start the first lick, part of the lick is just the open G string and the B string and then hammer on that. And then the next thing, we're just playing the, the G string and the B string the whole time. Those are the only strings we're gonna play. And then the next lick is second bar the second fret and you're hitting again the, the, the um, G string and the B string, se uh, third and second string. And then you're gonna go up here and hit four, and three, and then back there. So, so what's happening is we can take it one string at a time. The G string is open and hammer on, second fret, fourth fret, second fret. You can play this, not that it's gonna help you play the lick because it's very different than the lick, but it's the notes you can hear, start to hear the harmonic, what's happening harmonically here. Also, yeah, thanks, Bruce, for the reminder. Um, that could be a lick, too. That could totally be a lick. That could be something that you could play. In fact, that would be really cool. But, and then they go... To, it's like a theme and variations. You're doing, the, you're setting up a theme, a melodic, a rhythmic theme, and then you do a variation on it. Okay, the other string you're going to go open. On this is the second string, the B string. Open, second fret, third fret, and that's the same as going. Harmonically, it's the same thing. We're hitting the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, right? <laughs> and 
you put those together and it's... It's gonna take you a while to get this down. But like, I was using it like... kind of putting a swing on it I, obviously th that's like advanced if you can get it down that that way great um, but so this the E one is this and then the, the A one would be go to the fifth fret and bar at the fifth fret your main goal is just to get these two strings the second and third string and then hammer on your first finger and then I go ahead and slide up my first finger to get this and then add my second like that, like, so it's two thirds of the same motion of the E one. The B one is the, is the same. So if you get the A down, you'll have the E, uh, the B down. And you'll notice when I was just playing it just now, just kind of messing around with it, I went up to the 12th fret. So you could also do the E at the 12th fret. Drops. Okay, so let's try this. So we're at the fifth fret. We're doing this is the A chord, um, and we're gonna hit the the uh, fifth fret on the third and second string, and hammer on the first finger or second finger on the sixth fret. So we're and that's the flat third to the third. We're getting that sad happy thing happening right away. Sad happy. So you gotta frown and smile real fast. And there's a gift. <laughs> okay, and then you're gonna slide up, and that's uh, the seventh fret. Again, just those two strings, and then we're gonna go second and third finger on the. Uh, this is the ninth, and this is the eighth fret, and then back down to the seventh fret. So at the tempo, let me see the tempo we have here, because remember we do. Oh, and I, just so you know, I uploaded, if you didn't see that, I saw it already had quite a few uh, spins, so that tells me, um, oops, this is the wrong window, this window, then this window, okay. Um, I uploaded, I did like, I think it's 11 minutes long, so it should be a long time to play. You'll drive your spouse crazy. Um, and uh, so, um, this way you can, you can practice playing... Um, uh, soloing, practice the licks, the licks we've been learning, or whatever. You can practice your pentatonic scales. Uh, you can practice your rhythm. Um, I'm not sure. I didn't. I, I didn't count how many times it did it. I should have made a note. Like if you play through it once, sure, I, somebody can do that. <laughs> I should have. I got rid of that file actually. I created it, but it's in, in another piece of work that I'm working on. So I didn't want to have this 10-minute song in the middle of something else I was working on. Uh, so I chopped it back down to what I'm doing, and then it just repeat. I just have it set up to repeat. But the um, I could have counted it then, and I just didn't think about it because it would. Have, it's just right there. It's probably about ten times, maybe a little bit more, because I don't think it's quite sixty seconds to get through it once. You could probably run the numbers just that way. Count how how many seconds is one rotation through the twelve bar blues, and then <laughs> divide it into eleven. So anyway, uh, and uh, what do we have here? Okay, so let me hit this and. the guitar a little bit. It's a little loud, I think. It's buzzy too, huh? to resolve it. You don't have to go to here.
change the rhythm of it. It's just a lick, and you can make it your own. Um, I know it's not an easy one, but I thought it would be fun for some of the more advanced players to kind of uh, get it. And like I said, you could just play. Okay, so 30 seconds. So it's probably, if you play with that, if you want to practice the, your rhythm playing with it, remember I said we got to try to do... Uh, uh, not 10,000 times, a thousand times. I almost said 10,000 times. You'd be like, what? You're, right here. You're, you're moving the goalposts. No, like a thousand times, you know, get it. I, you know, the, the goal is to have it so second nature. Dies, dies wust, up dies wust. <laughs> I have no idea what it. Oh, that's the name of the kitty show? <laughs> I don't want to know. Okay, I'm touching my face. So everybody take a sip. That's a punitive, uh, that's a punitive sip because we're not supposed to touch our face in the coronavirus era. Uh, I wonder if they'll like the police will arrest you for touching your face if that has happened anywhere. Um, oh, <laughs> Jan, Jan and Dennis. Yeah, they can totally relate. They could have the same, uh, childhood. Um, yeah, and Paul Anka was nasty. I, uh, Jim, were you the? Did I? Did you? I know somebody. I mentioned it before. I said if you if you go to YouTube and enter Paul Anka rant, you'll hear this ten minute like rant after a show that he did, and he was. That's where he talks about. Oh man, my nose is just. Another sip. Where he talks about um, all the <laughs> the, uh, uh, the guys get shirts. Where's Joe? <laughs> And I was talking to him about that, and he goes, oh, yeah. I, was that, I said, was that you that he was talking about? And he goes, oh, yeah, yeah. He goes, I never went to those meetings. I'm saying, how do you not get fired? He goes, I wanted to get fired. He was he's like. Uh, there were a bunch of guys, though. Um, uh, Diane, I'm going to tell a joke. This is a, kind of a sad joke, though. It's, not, it's, it's like, and, and you could probably insert a lot of people's names in here. But Buddy Rich... Uh, dies and uh one of the one of his band members calls the office this is a joke keep in mind uh and the, the day after he dies the the um one of the one of the musicians calls the office and says hey when is rehearsals and when are rehearsals starting and, and she goes oh i'm i'm sorry um buddy died yesterday so no more rehearsals and he's like oh okay next day the guy calls back so when are rehearsals and she goes uh i told you yesterday uh, buddy died. He's he died, and the guy goes, "Oh, okay," and and then he calls back a third day in a row, and she's like, "Listen, I told you yesterday, and I told you the day before that Buddy's dead. He's dead." And the guy goes, "Yeah, I know. I just like the sound of it." Oh, <laughs> I hope that's never ever said about me. Yeah, it is a cringeworthy video. Yeah, yeah. Now Paul's still alive. And I told you about the, the time I got asked to play to go to St. Petersburg, Russia with Paul Anka to play my way. Because I guess so, somebody did some research on this. I thought he wrote it, but he apparently did the English translation of it or something. Anyway, he wrote the, the English lyrics um, uh, or the translation. Translation, see, what's interesting, if you do a translation of a song um, and it's released, the translator gets writer's credit because it's such a major deal to translate something from a... French to English or Spanish to English or French to Spanish or whatever, because you really do have to take a lot of liberties and maybe change. Uh, you really have, it's, it's really hard sometimes. Um, but, uh, um, the originals in French. Okay. Yeah. So, so I got asked to, to go to, and I told you this story already, but it didn't end up working out, but I wanted to do it. It would have been fun. And, and the crazy thing was, I don't even think he said, yeah, don't worry about too much. They have a track playing. So there's already guitar on the track. I went, well then, why? Well, because he wants a big band behind him. I'm like, okay. And it was for it was for Vladimir Vladimir Putin's birthday. <laughs> so I would have been playing for Vladimir Putin's birthday. I, I mean, that would have been pretty freaking cool, you know. Not a fan of the guy, but <laughs> okay. So let's go over this a little bit too much. Um... So again, it's open G and B and hammer on the. First fret on the third string. So you're going G to G sharp. Again, the e, it's like E minor to E. You, which you could do if you want to on the big E chord. And then second fret, 
both strings, and then fourth fret and third fret. It's kind of got a rockabilly feel to it too. So if I if I do something like this, if, if I'm an E, if I go something like that, that's very very rockabilly. Basically, what I'm doing there is a harmonized mixolydian scale. In other words, I'm playing a mixolydian scale starting on, well, it could be like here on the G, and I'm going down to the F sharp, I'm sorry, G sharp, F sharp, G, E, D, that's what makes it mixolydian, C sharp, B, A, and an number, like that. And then I'm harmonizing it, so I'm playing a third up from that. So the G sharp and the B, so not to say that's all it is, <laughs> but that's all it is. So by itself, it's a great way to play kind of a, a rockabilly sound. You can do it in blues too, but I always associate that kind of lick with rockabilly. And then the harmony was. And basically it ended up being two shapes. This shape, which is the one we use here, and this shape which is the one we used here. So it's really only two shapes. Ah. You can kind of mess around. It almost sounds like some kind of rockabilly Christmas song, Jingle Bells rockabilly style. So. Can I link the YouTube video on the show I was talking about? <laughs> yeah, sure, Dennis, you can, you can do that. The, the funny thing is that I know in my, my friends in England, there was one show that they, they named some of the characters uh, a certain way. It was a, it was a sailing show. If I have any English people, they might not hear in England. They know, may know. And some of the characters were named things that where the parents in the back were probably going, oh, no, or laughing or whatever. But the kids are completely oblivious. Uh, but I won't. Uh, um, oh, hey, Gary's Moses is in the house. <laughs> we got to get some stone tablets, Gary. <laughs> um, OK, so and then if we go to A, just again, the A thing is. Um, are the at the fifth fifth fret for the A7 chord. So visualize this chord. Even if you can't play this chord, you can kind of see it there. So we're, this is where we're going to start it. Hammer on the second finger on the third string, and then go up to the seventh fret, and then the ninth and eighth fret, and then back down the seventh fret. And I'll tell you right now, if you accidentally hit the first string, it's not a, it's not a crime. First two work fine. This, this one's a little weird. It's like playing an E minor chord over A. So if you put the pinky there on C sharp, that might work. I don't know. Then it ends up being a three three note lick, a three string lick instead of a two string lick. And then the B one would be just here. Same thing is here. And then you go up to twelfth fret to get the to get the E fingered exactly the same way as the is the A and the B7 chords were fingered. Um, the thing is, is that, you know, a lot of the, the cool thing about guitar is to play licks like that and to move them around, you just move them around. On piano, you actually have to learn them a new fingering every time. So it's a little bit, it's more difficult to play something like that on piano in some ways. Obviously, there's a lot of things that are easier on piano than guitar, uh, but this isn't one of them. And so. Doing like a one, a two, a three, a four, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, like a shuffle kind of feel. Uh, now, if I were to do that straight, it would sound like this. Like I've said before, swing feel, everybody feels it differently. So it's very, it's innately human. 
Um, when you program swing into a, a computer, you, you can program it all like a whole range of percentages. And so every one of them feels different. And you're like, oh, I like that one. Or, no, oh, that one's kind of cool. Or, one's, oh, that's really laid back. Or, oh, that's really pushing. Um, and, and that's just exactly, you know, everybody plays it differently. I, I, a drummer friend of mine explained it kind of like this way. The beat, you know, he uses teeth. He's like, you can put your thumbnail and touch the teeth. And then it's like, if you put your thumbnail behind the teeth and in front of the teeth, that's like the teeth of the beat. And then the thumbnail is where you're going to be in that beat. Are you going to be a little before the beat, a little after the beat, that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> you am not a robot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, let's see. So Dennis posted the link to the probably very inappropriate children's show in Holland. <laughs> it's like, are, are they in? The, is it? Is it? Does it take place in the red light district? That's what I want to know. <laughs> is anybody here from at the in the UK? Uh, boop, 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 boop. Okay, so that was uh, that. Let's do, let's just go ahead and do some. Um, Let's play the blues a little bit. Let's go ahead and uh, play our chords. Let's see, if you want to play up here and practice different chords, okay? Uh, you can play A7 here and B7 there if you know that, and then I'll show you the E7 chord that you could play. And technically, you could play with open strings. This is another E7 because, it, because it's E, and your, your outside strings are both E strings, so you could technically play it like this. All right. So that would be open, seven, six, seven, five, open. Ah, my nose itches. Sorry, take a drink. Um, but to make it movable, I would mute those strings. So you would do more, this is, I think, better, a better voicing. And it's just cooler sounding, I think, to go X and then seven, six, seven, five, X. So if you want to do that, um, the, the, uh, Um, let's see. Um, right, exactly, Bruce. We can't we can't moderate the moderator, right? Um, let's see. So the A seven was. Sorry, I was reading comments. And then the B seven was. These are just the bar chords. So if you play a major bar chord and take off your pinky, that creates a seventh chord. Uh, seven nine seven eight seven seven. All right, so those are the two seventh chords. So if you want to play those, and I, I may play them too with you, uh, so you can be practicing. Because I'm always like, I always, you know, I'm. I how many people do we have right now? It's not been very crowded. Let's see, 38. Yeah, it's not very high. So um, 39. Um, so, uh, but I'm always trying to accommodate all the levels. We have multiple levels here watching. I mean, I doubt we have any advanced players. Uh, but I always want to make sure you've got something that you can, that you can do. Um, let's see. Okay, so go here. One, E2, uh, uh, get your E chord ready. One, two, three, four. That's pretty close. E7, two, three, four. A7. I'm going to turn off my sound. B7. You want to practice making short chords too. I'm having to mute with my right B7. I'm having to mute with my right hand and my left hand both when I'm using open chords. But if I go up to the B, the bar chords, I can mute with just lifting the strings off the frets. Boy, it's hard to Sometimes hard to talk. <laughs> well, for me, it's always hard to talk and think at the same time. That never happens. <laughs> okay, B7, here we go. A7. Two, E7, four, now. E7, B7. Okay, I'm gonna go up to the fifth fret, play E7 up here. It's like the C7 moved up. An A7 bar for the intermediate players that don't have problems with bar chords. A7, fifth fret. And practice not looking at your hands if you can. It's another trick. And I forgot to mention that in my how to change chords faster 
that's an important one, and I totally spaced it. Somebody had to point it out. But remember, I used to put an album, put an album here between the student and their hand so they couldn't see them. B7, E7. And if you want to practice that lick, you can do it here too. I can turn it up a little bit. I don't know if that's louder or not for you guys. Top one is for the E7 chord. The B7 is the bottom one. Of course, now you don't have a chord chart. You shouldn't need a chord chart by now, though. In fact, keep going. A7. You like the seating changes? It's like, hey, this is like a pro show now. Uh-oh. Look at that box back there. Is that just taunting us? B7. Turn around, top of the song here. E. power chords too. Remember our little two note dyad? P7, A7 to E7. I love that. This is In fact, you can, it's, you can slide in by half step. Morning, na 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 na. And then up to B7. A7 to E. And um, that's actually really, really good uh, practice to play this without the chart because you really do need to memorize it. Um, that, that's uh, just another level of knowing something is not having to look at the chart because trust me, you play a blues band, they don't have charts. If you're going to jam with friends, I mean, if you want to, you could print up a chart or write out something for yourself. Um, and it, we should do different keys. Um, probably should. Um, uh, the main thing I'm wanting you to hear though is the relationship of the one, then it goes to the four, then it goes back to the one. And so we can easily transpose this to any key, okay? Um, I'm not gonna do it right now. Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, Mark, I'm gonna open it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dolomite. <laughs> don't want to reference Dolmet, but I actually played on that movie. I, worked, I did guitar on that. Or some. I did something on it. I don't remember. I know I worked on it. I, I, I watched it, but I didn't hear myself. That often happens. Um, okay. So let's see. What else? Okay. I gave you the lick in uh, the, the fun lick. All right. Now we talked about the, the Mixolydian things, and we didn't actually put those into practice. Okay. Um, here, I can put this here like thus. I can, yeah, I, I kind of leave it like this. I can make these a little bit bigger, I guess. Um, but the idea here was to, to, uh, 
to play in the over the blues and make it a little jazzier sounding or a little maybe a little more Nashville sounding or maybe more Texas swing or you know different things like that I can add um, I can add the let me find the let me find the uh, let's see the chords oh I gotta go here um, Simple blues. There we go. Boom. Okay. <laughs> there. That's where it should go. Right there. <laughs> but I can make this smaller. If we're going to actually do this, I'm not sure if we're going to, we're actually going to do this or not. But, um, because this, this is a lot to bite off. But, but what I did was just so you can know what those diagrams on the right are. Um, those are all the notes in three different mixolydian scales on the top two strings in the first position okay <laughs> say that five times fast um, in other words one way to play over the blues is you look at the 12 bar blues when it's on e7 you can play an e mixolydian scale <laughs> And that's not a bad thing to do. I mean, it's, it's it's maybe a little bit more jazzy. It's not there's not as much conflict. In fact, there's no conflict. Um, un unlike when we were doing the blues before, you're playing over an E7 chord. You're playing over a, technically a major chord, but you're playing a minor pentatonic. So you get this this like the, you get that G sharp and that G ringing out against each other, and it that's part that's intentional. That's to create this tension. Um, that is the blues. Um, and so, hey, Pepper's here. And then um, the, uh, um, the, so, but this way, if you play the, the E mixolydian, it basically fits very well over the E7 chord. Um, and so same thing's true with A mixolydian fits over A7 chord. And the B mixolydian fits over the B7 chord as well. So uh, they all fit perfectly over them. Um, and so how, so how can we... We did that thing where we did the uh, this lick, this thing here. Is it here? Yeah. So we had these... We kind of created new pentatonic shapes uh, to accommodate the chords. The first one being the E. The second one being the, uh, over here, the second one being uh, for the A7 and the last one being for the B7. Okay, so um, I'm getting better at being a weatherman, you guys. So here in the northern states, okay, so um, so basically um, you can you can play each one of these licks on the on your right have um, six notes. They they all have the open strings, and then it's uh, th so two. Three notes total on the two, on the B string and three notes total on the E string, and there, if you look at, if you compare the E mixolydian with the A mixolydian, there's only one note difference, and then if I move, you can see between the E mixolydian and the B mixolydian, there's also only one note difference. Okay, so let's do this. Let's go ahead and put it back the way it was. There's no undo. This uh, undo doesn't work on this software. Okay. So I don't think what it is. No, always on top. Okay. So um, the uh, so the E seven. So like over the E seven chord, you can play this open B. And then over the A seven, you can play. This. And over the B, you can play. This. So you can hear how those all have slightly different sounds to them. Uh, they have the E mixolydian and the A mixolydian have technically six total notes in common and only one note change. Uh, and you can see it if you look at the, the scale uh, right here, down here, boom. Okay, this thing here, where you look at the notes in the E mixolydian scale, you see that the E mixolydian scale has a G sharp, but the A mixolydian scale has a G natural. And the E mixolydian scale has a D natural, but the B mixolydian scale is a D sharp, okay? 
and those relative majors, okay, the E, and no quiz on this, take a sip, a celebratory sip because there's no quiz. Does that screen work for you there, Bruce? Um, so, uh, especially if you're on a laptop or something, dang it, touched my face. Okay, another sip. So, I, I don't want you to be too, like, disheartened by seeing mixolydian and all these notes and everything like that. This is a little bit of the next level kind of thing, and we could go up and down the neck, and we are going to do that. I, I, uh, Leo maybe was asking for that. I forget who. I don't see him in here yet. He may be there just not ch uh, texting or, or chatting, um, but we're talking about going up the... And one thing you can do if you want to, you can take that... Uh, here, this, uh, no, this, yeah. You can take the blues, um, and I can, Bruce, I can change the screen, like do this kind of thing with it. All right. Uh, oh, you know what? We want, I want to swap these though. I want this for the E minor pentatonic. So what you can do with the E minor pentatonic, you can almost ignore the blues one at this moment, um, is you can, uh, a little small. I'm not very OCD. I just trying to get them the same size. Um, you can try to find. So when we play the bottom, like on that E minor pentatonic, that top scale, hit the open E string, and then the third fret, right on the on the third uh, third finger on the third fret. The next note is the A. Well, if you find that note, that A, the open A on the E string, which is just a tuning note, right? That's you're now you're starting to create the next pentatonic shape up the fretboard, okay? And if you do that on the you hit A and then B, right? And then you go the next string is D, the next note is D. But if you find that D up here, it's the tuning note. So now we have this scale, right? And that's kind of the and if we can hit hit the bottom string if we want, but open. Um, but that. Are the is the first four notes of the pentatonic shape above this this one right here, okay? And that box is taunting you, du, 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 du. taunting, taunting, taunting. <laughs> yeah, well, it's taunting me too. I've had it since last night and I haven't opened it. So yeah, I swear I haven't opened. It. I've got my box cutter here, ready to go, so I don't have to leave the room. <laughs> it was over there in the other room, and I'm like, no, 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 no. I got, I got to bring that in. I don't want to be like, well, I got a lot of things I could probably open it with, so it's not necessarily a problem. But anyway. Hey, Al, how's it going? Yeah, you know, Al, I, I always say with, with, uh, with this stuff, and this is lesson 50, day 50 in a row. And not on the blues. We've kind of talked all about a bunch of stuff. Um, but what I what I always say is that look you're gonna hear I'm gonna I'm gonna sneak a little music theory in at the same time I'm teaching some some basic guitar stuff and you won't understand it the first ten times you hear it and then and I hear this all the time from you guys <laughs> that a light bulb went off and I love that that's my favorite thing to hear so just say that everybody say that now no but um, but everybody can say that you know kind of encourage uh, encourage Al um, uh, because uh, the uh, that that's one of the things I like to like to see is the light bulb go off. And so when I'm teaching something, you may hear it 10 times and not understand it. And that 11th time, all of a sudden you'll be like, wait, oh, that's what you, you know. And I try to explain things in multiple different ways. It's always fascinating to me, even just the fingerings and chord diagrams, how people will say, no, that's not the right finger. And I'm like, that's the right finger. Well, that's not how I learned it. And it's like, yeah, okay, I get it. You know, everybody learns things differently or their brain figures things out differently, but it's not how I'm teaching it. So they think I'm wrong, <laughs> but it's not, it, you know, I'm never wrong. <laughs> so, so Al, you can count on that. <laughs> yeah. Like I have a bar of five in my blues gym that, <laughs> that I just posted. So Al, we've been talking about the blues and uh, we basically, and I can go back to the, I think the is it scene two that has, aw, did I lose? What? Why did that go away? See, this went away. I don't understand. Now watch, if I insert the blues thing in here, is it going to... This is so weird. Um, I'm going to... 
I think it's because I'm giving it different names, maybe. Uh, let me see what happens. Watch watch it disappear on the other one if I... In, it's because it's the same image and I'm, I'm giving it different names, so then it can't find it, I think is what's happening. Um, let's see. See, there's... So, Leo, this... I mean, not Leo, sorry. Um, Al, this is what we've been doing. Just a very basic blue, so if you know... You want to take a screenshot or something like that. Also, let me put up a... You can't be nice to Al. <laughs> What's in the box? Yeah, it's very Pandora-like, right? It's like, it's just sitting in the room. Well, I already told you what's in the box. box. It's a Bode Psaltery. I've just never seen one in person before, so it's going to be interesting for me, too. Um, and we'll get to it soon. Don't worry. Uh, sorry, uh, I'm going to... Oh, I don't even have that open. Okay, hold on a second. Let me open up um, the dis Discord. So, so um, Al, there's a whole bunch of... If you, I'm going to give you a link that you can uh, join this... Uh, this, I guess you call it a... What, what would you call this? Like a kind of site this is. Um, invite people. So here's this. It's just basically another chat room. But we can we upload uh, links and video. We can link to videos. We can, um, uh, but I upload all the images and everything from the um, from from the lessons that are all up there. So you can download those and print those up if you want. So oh, also dang it, um, I need to give you the. Here's the link. Well, I mean, you all know my webs. You know my YouTube channel. But in case you didn't get it, here's the link to the new video. Um, videos. <laughs> Ignore the graphic. <laughs> Bar nine has. Uh, I'm an idiot. Bar nine on the graphic, not in the music. Don't worry, it's not in the music. <laughs> but Jim Lee discovered this that I, <laughs> like I just said, I never make mistakes. Um, this was a pretty big one in my opinion. But anyway, on the graphic, bar nine has five B strums. So, <laughs> so it's a bar of five in the middle of a twelve-bar blues. That would just be, that would be annoying. So yeah, beginner's blues. In effect, if you go back to, we started um, the whole blues thing. Uh, if I look at my live, here's the first lesson on that. I'll send you a link for that. Uh, was it this, where is it? Okay, so lesson 43 is the first lesson um, that we did. And here it is right here. So we're at lesson 50. So the last eight lessons we've done um, are in, um, uh, are, are, uh, on bl basic blues. Okay. And we're talking about playing the blues, trying to get a, you know, play through the progression a thousand times, you know, so that you're very familiar with it. Um, the other thing is you're, you've just unknowingly, unwittingly joined a, a very supportive chat group. <laughs> so, so don't be surprised if these people, uh, take care of you in ways you don't even realize. So... Yeah, chat room. Okay, so um, let's see. Now, I was talking about the, the Mixolydian thing. And again, this is something that's a little bit more advanced. But um, we could we could just sit here and in uh, the... Uh, we could just do the B string. So don't worry about all six notes. Just do three notes. So over E, you could do open, second, three. And where have you heard that before? That's our Sesame Street, right? And we just did this. And so those three notes there are the top three notes of the lick I was showing you. Okay? Um, and so you, we can just solo with those. And then over the A, seven, it's the same three notes. But you're probably going to, so on the E, uh, on the E, okay, the notes um, that are in the E7 chord that are in those three notes, the open B string is the is the fifth of the E7 chord, and then the D is the seventh of the seventh chord, the E7 chord. So those two notes are very friendly to the chord and will sound good over the E chord. Um, however, on the A mixolydian, when we go to the A chord, Neither of those notes are going to sound as good as the C sharp. And I'm going to show you this, okay? I'm going to show you this. 
And then on the B one, we've had, that's the only one that's different. And we're gonna have open, second, and fourth fret, and that's a D sharp. So the, that open is the root of the B7 chord. And then the this is the third of the B7 chord. So again, we have two, two out of the three notes that sound pretty good. Okay, let me play the jam, and then I'll just use, just play these. one finger so you can really see what I'm doing. Sorry. And that's one of the things you can really do too. Um, it's, it's two things. It, it, musically, it makes a lot of sense. Um, but also what it does is it kind of highlights, and I'm going to tell you in a second, it highlights uh, um, that you know what you're doing, okay? So you'll notice over the E7 chord, I was really sitting on that D. And I just right, right away went to the B, to the B, the D sharp right there, the fourth fret. Again, I could just use my first finger. Um, to really highlight the fact that, oh, I know this is a B7 chord, okay? I could also just sit on the B note over the E chord and then B7 chord, da, 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 the B works. Um, but that doesn't sell the notion that you know that the chord changed. I love the common tone. Don't get me wrong. Remember, we did that a lot. Remember, E, an E note... E note works great over the one chord, um, the the one the E seven chord and the A seven chord, the four chord. Um, so and uh, Al, the reason you call it the one four five progression is if we were looking at a, a major an E major scale, and basically to to harken back to childhood, do re mi fa sol la ti do. Hey, David's here. Good to see you, David. Um, uh, so, if we count up the scale, one, two, three, four, the, the four chord is built on that note, and then if we go one, two, three, four, five, that the five chord, B7 in this case, is built on the fifth note of the scale. So that's why it's called a one, four, five progression, and blues foundationally is built around the one, four, five chord, okay? Hey, David. Um, so, so Obako Cat is here too. Ba ba is it Bako Cat? Yeah, Bako Cat. Yeah. Le what do you mean no lesson? We're doing a lesson. <laughs> so, how do you like the screen setup this way? Does this work for you guys? Is this you like it? Yeah, Bonnie's on. I've seen Bonnie on. Um. And so now I can do the same thing with the top two strings. So you'll notice the opposite is true. So with, if we go the, I mean, sorry, not top two strings, the top string, the first string, E, okay? Over, over the E7 chord, the, the Mixolydian scale tones that work. Okay, O, two, four. Okay, and over the A chord, we're going to be Back to the E. Back to the A7. So with the E chord, it's the open E string and the fourth fret. Those are notes that are in the chord. This would be the ninth. This would be the third. This would be the fifth. I'm sorry, the root. No quiz. Um, oh, shoot. Okay. 
celebratory sip. See, I say that too often, Gary. I don't know if that should be one of the if that should be one of the rules. I say there will be no quiz on the weekend or on at the end of the week. I say that so often. Um, okay, good. You like the setup. Okay. Yes, I've gone high tech. So I'll try to do it. Um, I'll try to do it like this from now on. I'll try to come up with. I can even generate graphics that work better. You know that maybe are flatter, so I can I can open the window bigger, because I can totally move these over. I can move the 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 licks over, further to the right. But then if I bring the window over, then then the those things on the bottom are going to be down down here. <laughs> these things down here are going to be. <laughs> I don't know how weathermen do it. Um, are going to be. Uh, I had a band in high school called the Weathermen. Cheers. Probably a million bands called the Weathermen. The Weathermen or the Weatherman? No, the Weathermen. So let me play this, but um, and then on the B chord, actually that's the only note that's in the B chord. This would be the fourth, which isn't going to really work very well. But you can. And you're only on a B7 chord for two bars out of the whole 12, so it's really not that bad. And if you can't do this or don't want to even mess with it, you can just play the chords. Um, but this F sharp is the only note of those three that's actually in the B7 chord. Right? But that's a 13th. That might sound kind of cool. In fact, I did earlier when I was playing around with this, I went, I kind of went to the A note, which is the seventh of B. It sounds great. The seventh always sounds good. So, all right. What do we have here? Um, oh, how many people we have watching? Ah, 40, 43, and then as soon as I asked, it went down to 42. Yeah, I was in a lot of bands in high school. Literally, I think 1,500 different bands I've been in high school with in high school. Uh, all right, so here's the jam. I can, again, use my first finger. So there's the seventh of A and the fifth of A. Looks like this a million times. Play mixolydian on every chord. <laughs> I'm a squirrel. I am a squirrel. I didn't see a squirrel. I am a squirrel. That was really squirrely of me. But anyway, putting down a guitar. Whoa. Yeah, I'm putting down a guitar. I'm picking up box cutter just to look at it and then set it down again. Because <laughs> I'm messing with you guys. I just like messing with you guys. Sorry. 
All right, getting warm in here. It's gonna be 96 today. And the air conditioner is not kicked on yet, which is fine. I don't really need that backlight on, although it is highlighting the box better. <laughs> it's like I got, it's almost like I got a spotlight on that box, don't I? I meant to say dating. What were you, we're, we're doing ourselves here. <laughs> well, dating yourselves, doing yourselves, kind of the same thing, right? Uh, okay. Uh, so we can't, we have to, we have to put this, uh, we have to flag this uh, video as not safe for children. Uh, yeah, I'm messing with y'all because I, I love you. Is it story time? I, I don't know if we're going to do story time today. Well, maybe we'll do story time. I don't know. What time is it? Only 12.06. You guys, come on. Guys, wimps, wimps. All right. Uh, let me just let me just see what we got here. What do I do? Okay, so there's the blues, uh, basic blues. We did some progressions through there. There's the same thing. Why do I have this twice? <laughs> I was like trying to find it, and then I, I didn't realize I had another scene. Okay, there's the. So I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna try to do this more. Like I can reorganize this window here. To be I don't know how would how would. What can I do? I can put and actually I'm learning more. Uh, 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 was it? Dennis, is that what you sent me? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I like it. I kind of like it the way it was for this particular thing because these are awful. Whoops, big. Um, but Dennis sent me uh, a link. I think it's actually the website that created the software so I can download a whole bunch of, um, of, of things that I can use. I don't know how much I'll do. You know, I, we, we, I, I see them on uh, Twitch. People definitely use this software for Twitch because I see that they set it up like that, like this. And then over here, they'll have, you know, like the comments will be on. So we, I could actually move the comments onto this screen um, so that we can all see them. I could do that, right, uh, Dennis? Um, Streamlabs, yep. And I checked out that website. Thank you so much. I uh, Oh, dang, I don't think I bookmarked it. I'll, I'll find it, though. You, um, I'll find it again. Um, oh, Al will go away on replay. Did something, Al say something weird? Oh, you're saying you can't see Al? Where did he go? I mean, I haven't seen him in a while, but that doesn't mean he's not there. There he is. I see him up there. Um, wow. So yeah, let me pull up Streamlabs again. Let me save, bookmark that. Create a new playlist. Yeah, Streamlabs, there it is. Okay. Yep, that's yep, that's the site. So yeah, I noticed on on Twitch that a lot of the streamers have those uh, a lot of information all around them. It's pretty darn irritating, in my opinion. It's a little too pretty. Uh, some of the stuff's like eye candy all over the place, and then there's like thanks for subscribing, blue, you know, like little. Oh, there you go. Is <laughs> Al? <laughs> I see Al. Um, okay, that, and yeah, that's a good idea. Zen, although the, the graphics I'm creating myself, so sometimes they're not like uniform shapes or sizes. You know, they could be kind of weird graphic sizes, depending on how much information I'm putting in there. Did I lose? Oh, no, was it scene seven that I had? There it is. Okay. Um, I think it, you're right, though. It looks, it looks pretty darn good. I mean, I wish I could make this wi the, my window of me bigger. I want to be more prevalent, but <laughs> so um, no. Oh, oh, Bonnie, Bonnie's got a new uh, avatar. That's what threw me off. Bob's looks like Bob's got a new avatar too. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. I uh, put you on the big screen, so I have to. Look at, oh, you have to look at the iPad for comments. Yeah, yeah, that's right. If you, that's right. It won't. That won't go up there, right? Yep. Yep. That's kind of weird. All right, all right. It's time to unbox the box. Yeah. Maybe I'll do it later. <laughs> okay. All right. We're, we're going to confirm that I'm wearing pants now. Now, I have no idea if this is, uh, if he tuned it, if it's tuned or not. I'm not sure if they would have if they would have tuned it, I'd really try really hard not to cut a finger off. Um, <laughs> I know 
someone's gonna say never cut towards yourself right you're always supposed to cut away from you but it it feels so awkward to cut away from myself you know probably gonna <laughs> find out right now why you never cut towards yourself but uh, I can't tell if that's an invoice. I'm going to go ahead and treat it as if it was. I mean, I can print up an invoice, but, uh, you know, it, this is a write-off. When you do this for a living, it's a write-off. And I got this from a, an old guy in Nashville, Indiana, who makes mostly dulcimers. And he makes hammer dulcimers, too. Eh, no, it's not. It's just a label. Okay. Um, he makes uh, hammer dulcimers and Appalachian lap dulcimers. So I... I found out about this guy um, through a composer that I haven't worked for yet, but he reached out to me and wants to work with me, which I'm always, I've got, I think I've added two or three composers to my client list in the last six months or so, which is always good. Um, generally, everybody I work for, I keep working for. They like what I do, so so that's good. Um, you can keep clients. Uh, I don't do enough session work to pay all the bills, so most of my income is actually from, and I'm touching my face. Most of my income is from uh, royalties from TV and music I've written for different, you know, mostly like Bieber and um, and even be the Bieber stuff doesn't doesn't pay that much. Uh, none of, I've never written, I've never had a single release with him. Although I do have a, new, a song on the new album, I'm hoping at some point maybe they do release it as a single. They could, um, but. Uh, Yeah, I know, I know, but it, cutting away from myself, it just feels like, it doesn't, feel, it feels awkward to cut away from yourself. My son told me that. He goes, don't cut towards yourself. I'm like, yeah. Um, I just go really slow. I'm very cautious with my hands, but then um, I, uh, um, ah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> wow. Go slow. Don't be too excited. So anyway, this guy, they didn't have, oh, look. Okay, well, let's find out what's in here. Um, this is very exciting. There's a lot of stuff going on here. There's a lot of, you know, this, we got multiple unboxings to do. Um, let's see. All right. Okay, here's the tuning. Here's the tuning list. Look at all those strings. Oh, my gosh. Look at all the pegs down here. Crud. So this, is, what's funny about this, this looks totally like a mimeograph. <laughs> Oh, and he's telling me what strings to use. So 11s and 13s. So I got to go buy a... Well, if I want to change them, I have to go out and buy a billion 11s and 13s. I'm assuming that you keep the... You have ball end strings. So basically what you have here is the black... Or the white keys and the black keys. So you can pretty much play... Which is interesting. If the song's in C and you're using two bows... Because what... Well, we'll see in a second here. I'm not sure. Oh, and look. He included a guide to playing. In fact, is it his? No. This is really cool. That's awful cool. And then, okay, Mary had a little lamb, a little song so I can practice. You know, I'm probably not going to do that. Um, but anyway, that's cool. So, uh, but it's a lot of strings. Like I said, I don't know if they, um, there's something else in here. Oh, some 11s. Oh, I see. He probably put 11s and 10s in, or 11s and 13s in here, just in case something broke. Yeah. So he gave me how many strings? Two, two of each. It looks like two 13s in here and two 11s in here. So probably because occasionally they break in transit. So that's kind of cool. Uh, all right. So let me keep these in here. Uh, and I, I think I paid extra to have, or I think it comes with a case that he made himself too, out of wood. We'll see. I'm not sure if that's, I think that's right. Because I, it's, I mean, I could hang this. There's one thing that I, I noticed on it that I might change. Oh, and here's, this is cool too. I got some like local Indiana circulars for stores I probably haven't been to since I was a kid. So that's kind of cool. Yep. So he built a box for it, which is really cool. He built the box himself. All right, so I'm going to have to set this down. So, try not to break a guitar. I mean, it's very well packed. I love this box. 
And see, the beauty is I really wanted to have the box. Look at this box. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at that. It's got like a, it's got a strap on it, like a, it's like um, canvas or something. Very simple, but, but a beautiful. I love the fact they use two different types of wood on the box. Isn't that nice? I mean, that's just the box for crying out loud. But it, I really do need to have a box because I got to store it. I got to get it in the closet and, and it'll go somewhere in there. I mean, I may hang it if I can, because part of the advantage, the reason I hang so many of my, you can't really see, but in the bathroom and in the hallway over here, I have all my ukuleles and my mandolins and my, you know, not my banjos, but um, uh, there's a couple other instruments. I've got a um, strummer, I think it's called or something. It's kind of a, a, a stand-up dulcimer. Um, so, and this was, I'm going to tell you, it was $250 for this, including everything, including shipping, tax, everything. So that's pretty cool. No, this is the wooden box for a, we're about to see it. Well, it sounds like it's, it's kind of in the, in the tuning range. Oh, interesting. I see how he did the strings. Okay. So this is called a bowed psaltery. Now, the only thing that I noticed on it that I would change, look at this thing. So it's kind of like an auto harp that you bow. And you get access to each string here. So you bow whatever note you want on the side, on the edge, okay? Um, but what I, um, I noticed, I wish he almost didn't, like he left a lip here, like either he went a little further, right? Or he he just stopped the body short of the tip so that I could clip on a tuner because this is too big to put a tuner on. There's no place on here that I can get a tuner on. So I'm going to have to, I mean, that's just not good. It's touching the string, so it's not going to work. So that would be the only change I would make. And I could even put something, on, attach something if it doesn't rattle or buzz. Okay. So, I mean, this is really cool. Look at this case. Let me throw that away. Um, here's the bow. And then they also give you rosin, because you have to rosin. And the bow is, I think, made of string, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so we got, oh, and there's little little foam on the lid. So it fits in the case like this. I mean, yeah, I'll put it, I'll give you a link to the builder. Um, I mean, that's, for $250, you get an instrument that's handmade, this beautiful. It's like, are you kidding me? In fact, the, the uh, I'm getting, so what I'm buying from him, I was, I started to tell you, how I found out about this guy was from a composer out here, and he had just bought a, a chromatic dulcimer, and I don't even know how that came up. But I went, chromatic dulcimer? I'd rather have a chromatic dulcimer than a diatonic dulcimer. So a, di a dulcimer is normally, uh, uh, I'll show you later. <laughs> I'd have to leave the room. But let's all take a sip, because I was really touching my face there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this down for a second, I'm gonna, so I can unwrap the bow and the rosin. But that is freaking really amazing. And so I went ahead, I'm going to get the, um, <clears throat> I mean, I think the case is, a, it came with that. I think I, and I, for the, um, the thing that I'm getting from him, see, here's the bow. Oh, no, it is actually horse hair. Why did I think it, okay, so it is, it is a hair bow. Wow. That's crazy. Really cool, though. Look at that. And then you get the rosin, and it's not rosin. And the drag about rosin, like I, I've used a bow on my electric guitar before. Yeah, oh, question from Al regarding, okay. Speaking of cases, which best wood, fiberglass, plastic, or composite? Uh, I don't know, Al. Um, that's a tough one. You, there's forums where they talk about that got stuff, and oh boy, I'll tell you, it's, it's dangerous getting on some of these forums, like, oh gosh, what are those annoying, just some annoying forums. Uh, the gear page, oh my gosh. I hear the biggest BS from people that have no credits at all saying, well, this is the way you got to do the compression. And it's like, oh yeah, what album? And then you get like Al Schmidt get up there and he's like mixed, you know, a thousand albums, won like, you know, 10 Grammys, 20, 30, 40, 50 Grammys. And they're like, well, Al, Al Smith is, Schmidt is full of crap. It's not how it's done. You know, it's like, oh my gosh. Um, so I, you've got to be real careful with these uh these forums, but the you you will find pretty you know you can find some good advice. I would go to the acoustic guitar forum, I think is what it's called. Um, so here's some rosin. Oh, what's okay? Interesting. So there's some sandpaper, 
assuming the rosin, yeah, there's the rosin. Oh, I see. You sand the rosin. You need the sandpaper for the rosin. And then what's this? Oh, this is the tuner, of course. This is gonna be the bane of my existence, this thing here. And there's plenty of room in the case for all this stuff, although it's gonna rattle around in there. So I might, I might, I might put some uh, Velcro on the side here and then Velcro in there. And then I can just, it'll sh hopefully stay on there. It'll be enough Velcro, hopefully, enough contact to make it stay. And well, this I know I can Velcro on. So that way it's not all floating around there. Um, but like I said, tuning it, it's, it's gonna be a pain. Um, so let me rosin the bow up a little bit. Let me, no, so. But, uh, but just so you know, Al, I've never bought like a really, really nice case like for my classical guitar or something. I've never flown with my classical guitar. Um, I would be very nervous to. They're kind of fragile instruments. I've flown a lot with, my, with steel string guitars. And what I tend to do with steel... Now, back in the day when I was teaching clinics in the 90s, I literally would... What I would do is I'd care, get a soft bag for my, my Strat. Um, because Strats, you know, in a soft bag, it can really fit in a lot of places in the overhead band. On the acoustic, I, I didn't want to do that um, in case I had to check it. So I went ahead and carried the, the tailor. In this case, it was tailored, a tailor case. Um, so let me see. Uh, and I'm not an expert on rosining the bow. Anybody know about, anything about rosining bows? Question for Pepper. Thank you, Dennis. Um, well, I... I think, just, I think you just go in one direction. That's a lovely sound right there. <laughs> I think this bow is already rosined a little bit, but the rosin is basically just like, um, what is it? R rosin is just rosin. I don't, it's, it's like a, isn't it like some kind of tree sap, hardened tree sap? Yeah, Acoustic Guitar is a great magazine and so is Guitar Player Magazine, but Guitar Player tends to be, uh, you know, a lot of like, shredders on the cover or it, they'll put Jimi Hendrix on the cover like three out of the 12 months hilarious or John Mayer will be on every other cover you know Carlos Santana it's like what has he done lately so anyway okay let's see what this so the idea is and I've never played so this is my first time playing in fact I'm not even sure if it's let's see it's the it must be this way Well, it's pretty much in tune. So I'm assuming this is, um, mm -hmm. that's a, the bl three black keys. So you can see the way it's set up. You see it's like black keys, it's two, three, two, three over here. So these are the sharp, or the black keys, and then the white keys are on this side. So, so C would be, so if this is C sharp. And the nice thing is it is flat. So the strings are totally flat so I can go. I can kind of do that thing. <laughs> and I really what I'm gonna be, gonna be doing like, try, probably trying to get some chromatic. More for effect. And the hard part's going to be getting the... Oh, I'm glad I had it in, in view. Sorry, I didn't... Did it get too low? I'm in view, right? Yeah, it's kind of like a piano. So that, that's... So the window is this... Hmm... That's a D. Oh, it's getting lower, I see. D, C, B. Oh, hey, I'm so, so I'm a little confused, but I think it's in two. I'll figure it out later. Let's see, what's it? What was that? Oh, that's out of tune. That could be part of the problem too. So he included a, a very complex <laughs> T. 
tuning graph here, all right? And this would be very cool hung on the wall. I mean, it would really be beautiful on the wall. The only thing is there's no nothing to hang it from. Look at the back. Look at that. Isn't that great? I mean, for $250 with a case? Are you kidding me? And technically, the, you should have a second bow. So what, when I order the, uh, the and I'll, I'll put the link up there, okay? When I order the, um, uh, when I order the, uh, whatchamacallit, um, the chromatic dulcimer, I'll order a second bow at the same time. I think they're, they're like 25 bucks or something like that. So, um, so that way you can play with each hand and get stuff. Um, and you can cross, you can do crossover like this and play this, you know, like this and then over. So you, if you need to only play white, if it's in the key of C, you need to kind of do weird stuff. But anyway, yeah, that's really dope. I think I'm going to have a lot of fun with this. I'm, I'm sure I'll use it for some, some, uh, film score stuff. And then the way the strings go in there, so there's a the peg at the end. It, you can see I don't know if you can see that, but the the it actually has the ball end there. So it's very very, and I love look the sound holes even got a little pattern around it. It's very very cool. So let me let me put this down, and I want to catch up on some of these uh, comments. Yeah, so there's a spot for the bow and the rosin and the. And this is for the rosin, the sandpaper. And then the strings. And the and I think even the book would f may fit in there? I don't know. Oh, it'll fit under, well, I don't, I'll probably put the book somewhere else. The, the strings can fit in there, though. That's big enough for the strings, so that's perfect. That's awesome. Okay, so we'll keep this. That goes there. All right, so what are the comments? I'm sorry. Oh, oh, let me find the site. Uh, what was it? Um, I better find it. Let's see. It's funny because it's just a husband and wife, and she's a school teacher. Um, and so she couldn't, like, oh, I can't do it until Monday because I got to work and all this. I'm like, okay. Um, where did, where did, surely I bookmarked it. Oh, I know I bookmarked it. Let's see. Yeah, gear. Here, it's got to be in here. No. I got a lot of things in the game. Boy, it's going to take a minute. No. Dang it. And maybe in the emails. Oh, I know. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Watch Tom work. Watch Tom e do emails. Let's see. Uh, it was Graves was the name of the composer. Jason. There we go. Uh, okay, Mountain Made Music. All right, so I'm going to go to the home page. Now, why did, did I not save this? Yeah, Chromatic Mountain. Just, is it not there? And where does it show up? Oh, well, anyway. So let me go to the, see if I can go find a home page here. What happens if I get rid of all this? Just go to, let's see, delete, return. All right, perfect. Here's the website. So bookmark this before you lose it. You have to come back here and try to find it. Uh, but they also, he also makes, uh, let's see, he makes uh, Berg, I guess his name is Berg, home of Berg dulcimers, standard dulcimers, mountain dulcimers, uh, one and a half fret mountain dulcimers, chromatic dulcimers, box dulcimer, lap harps, dulcimer lap harp, ha hammer dulcimers, bowed psaltery, which is what I just bought. Um, so there was something called lap harps, I wish he made hurdy gurdies. Okay, lap harps are like, yeah, they're kind of like, kind of like that, but you, the the strings are spaced further apart so you can pluck them. Um, and I mean, eighty dollars for one of these. I mean, the cases. So a carved lap harp package deal with hardwood case carved, <laughs> ninety nine dollars. I mean, are you kidding me? This is like, oh, those are, this is too cool. I don't believe it. So, I mean, uh, I'm so, uh, we're, we're, now I got the, the bow salter. So I need to, I need to buy another bow is what I need. Um, it's funny if he gets like 10 more orders, you guys better not order too much or I'm going to be like, let's see, tuning wrench, a oh, bow's at 25 bucks. Yeah. So, uh, I, I he, they're going to make, he's going to make me a, a basic. I don't need, and that's the great thing about doing studio work is I don't really need to, uh, 
um, have fancy instruments. I don't need to have all the inlays and everything. I'm just sitting in here by myself. I don't care what it looks like. I want it to sound good. Um, okay, so let me go back, sorry, and see if I can catch up on some of these. Uh, I don't know how far back this goes. Uh, yeah, I know, right? Bruce, the box looks like it totally could be worth the 250 though. <laughs> it was all 250 <laughs> Totally delivered and everything, included shipping. Um, yeah, I know. You really, on a gym, you're saying, yeah, on the, the rosin, it takes a while to rosin a bow. I've got, I've got a, a cello bow here I use on electric guitar sometimes. Actually, I've used it on acoustic guitar too. I actually used this on um, the last Transformers movie on a, my, my baritone guitar. I probably won't do that again. It totally ruined the strings. Um, yeah, I'm going to have, I've got tuner. I've got a tuner that will, that I can just rest on it or something. I've also got a, somewhere I've got a, one of those Peterson strobe tuners. So yeah, I'll just do that or use my phone. Um, it won't go out of tune very much, so that won't be too much of a problem. Um, Let's see. What okay? Uh, Pepper asks, "What's a good magazine for?" Okay, we already got that. All right. Yeah, t I'll tune it for, with an iPhone probably. Question for Pepperoni. <laughs> Thanks, Dennis. How are you doing, Kathy? Are you okay? Um, let's see. Yeah, I think the raw. I think the sandpaper is to rough up the rods and and to to keep so that the the you have like little micro fibers on the rosin or on the, yeah, on the rosin that attach themselves to the bow, I think is what happens or something. Um, let's see, nails on a chalkboard, yikes. Yeah, it's not a beautiful sound. Um, it's a, it's an interesting sound, but I can see where, um, uh, um, I can see when, uh, Sorry, let me go. Okay, here we go. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, hold on a second. Uh, my son is texting me. Um, let's see <laughs> potato it sounds terrible yeah it's definitely a weird sounds like a squirrel <laughs> it's definitely a weird instrument but like I said it's going to be really good I can see where if you um, I can even play it with a pick once I had it tuned um <laughs> Kind of has a, uh, a Schwarmendahl kind of sound, which is an Indian instrument, you know. Um. Very pent, very pentatonic. Once I get it in tune, um, I'll be able to mess around with it more. But I, I think that the the bowed part of it I would use too. But there there may be multiple ways. I mean, I don't want to break a string, but you know, my my bottle cap works great on that so um yeah i'll definitely find uses for it i mean for 250 dollars, i'll definitely get my money out of it uh i'll use it on some movies or something i have a um, one composer i do a lot of games for he always loves weird things like that so um so um what else? Let's see. Uh, yeah, it's it's definitely. I think it would sonically. It's a little bit. Um, yeah, it's like a theremin. It is kind of like that. Heat. Oh, heat the rosin with a hair dryer to rosin the bow about thirty minutes before you play. Hilarious. Well, yeah. I'm, it's, I don't need to. I don't need to go that far, Al. I don't think. <laughs> Like it's one of those things. Where I'm gonna pull out of the case. I'm gonna play it and I'm gonna put it away. So, I, I've had bows before where it's like, oh dang it, I got a rosin and it's gonna, you know, and I, the ro with with violinists, they really definitely need the rosin to last hours because they're gonna a symphony could last, you know, th two and a half hours. They could be sitting on stage even longer. So 
I don't really see them rosining, too, rosining the bow too much once they're on stage. Um, but uh, yeah, Acoustic Guitar Magazine has some, oh, I, took, I touched my face. That's a sip. So, uh, Al, we have a we have a, a drinking game. If I certain rules that we have to play by, and if it happens, uh, one of them is if I touch my face, we all have to take a sip. But yeah, for two hundred fifty bucks, you can't you can't beat that workmanship. So, I mean, I'm sure he's got templates and he can make ten at a time. But um, let's see. Yeah, <laughs> do a bar chord on that, Bruce. Yeah, ain't gonna happen. I could I could probably do uh, harmonize it with myself, which would be kind of cool. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> Oh, oh, that was the sound that was the, yeah, the bow was definitely a bad sound. Oh, yeah, Pia makes a Pia, or however you say it, Pia makes, I forgot about that. They do make a theremin kit. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm watching Tom shop online. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Gary. Uh, Leo, Leo, let's see. Nice, the theremin is great. Oh, you guys are talking about theremins now. WTSO rule. Uh, I forget. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Wife yelled at me if I, if I <laughs> she'd yell at you if you brought home another instrument. I know, right? That would be pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, I'll play blues on it tomorrow, <laughs> Tom. <laughs> uh, oh, good, Kathy. I'm glad you're feeling better. Uh, rough up on the rosin for, r yeah, so it won't screech. Oh, okay. That's good to know, Jim. Thank you. Uh, Bonnie, uh, you're rosin the bow is like fingernails on a chipboard. Yeah, it's so bad. Yeah. Well, I I'll do that off offline next time. Um, yay, Kathy. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're feeling better. Okay. So, oh, try using slide on it. Hmm. All right. Uh, I actually, I do like playing, like, Oh, you can't see this, can you? Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. So that's not, it's pretty cool. It's cool. I mean, And again, the tuners are going to be a one-to-one -one ratio. So it's going to be like the slightest move is going to go up two whole steps. So it's going to be, it's going to take a minute to get used to that and uh, not break strings. Um, but it's only 11s and 13s. And I can't imagine any reason other than breaking one to replace them. I mean, maybe they'll get rusty. If I, if I hung it out, it might get rusty sooner. Uh, but in the case, I would think in the closet, it wouldn't be too bad. I'll figure out, there may be a way I can put something on the back, but I hate to mess it up. It's so beautiful. I could also maybe build a stand for it with a lip and put it on there, uh, like a, sh a little shelf with a lip, and it could sit up there. That would be cool. I could do that in a lot of places. And it's not, it's not likely to sympathetically vibrate too much. Um, I've got a couple of acoustic guitars on the wall that will, like when I hit a chord or something on my studio, and like a short note or a big drum hit or something, um, it will... Uh, um, They'll they'll keep they'll keep ringing, but that's a that doesn't really affect me at all because it's not getting on tape. So uh, let's see. But yeah, so I've, I've from the same guy I've ordered a chromatic dulcimer and they're gonna probably have that ready in about. Well, oh he sells a stand for it really hook. <laughs> he looks already on the website. I didn't see that. Oh that must be under accessories. Tom shopping online. Yeah, there's the guy right there. That's so cool. I mean, how cool is this? He builds them all himself. Yes, he even sells those chromatic tuners that you can. Uh, wait, let's see. You said he said, okay, the Bode Salter, you said he. So where did you see the stand? Is it specs? I should follow him on Facebook, though. Did you see a stand? I'm just, Birdie. Um, 
Anyway, cartoon sound effects. Exactly. I could, yeah, I will totally use it for, for all sorts of stuff. Later, Leo. He's probably already gone. I'm saying bye to someone who's left. Um, let's see. Uh, Hook, I'll see you later. Um, and I will see you guys tomorrow for Lesson 51. Um, what am I going to do tomorrow? You know what? I, I, I think I'm, I didn't see him here, but he asked to, if we were going to go further up the neck. Alan, maybe that. Um, why can't I access a channel when I click, right click on the avatar? I don't know why it doesn't do that. So in other words, if somebody has a channel, if you can click on and see their, their YouTube channel, I don't know why it doesn't do that. Uh, that may just be a privacy thing. Um, so, um, but yeah. Uh, oh, you might go for the hammer dulcimer. You're thinking about, oh, oh, maybe it's only for the hammer dulcimer. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I should be able to find a stand, uh, uh, a, a little like, um, thing that I can mount it to. I just have to make sure it's leaning enough back so if there's an earthquake, it doesn't fall off. But if we have an earthquake that pounds enough on that wall, it'll fall forward and break. So, um, I probably won't, uh, mount it, but I just have to remember that I have it. Um, yeah, I wouldn't mind getting a hurdy-gurdy, which is a similar kind of thing. It's it's like, it's look up hurdy-gurdy sometime. That thing's a weird instrument, but that one's an old instrument. This, people think that it's like from the time of David kind of thing, and it it probably kind of is, but I think it was invented by a German school teacher in 1948 uh, for students to learn how to kind of play music in the classroom without everybody having a piano. So, um, okay. So what time do you start? I start I'll, I start every day at 11 my time, Pacific Standard Time. I'm, I'm in Los Angeles. So I start at 11 and I usually go, oh, if I go two hours, I feel it the rest of the day. So I've got to stop now. But um, And I'm actually going to try to take today off, although I'm going to have fun with this thing. But that's not work. Um, but I generally go for about, you know, <laughs> probably the lesson ends up being about 30 minutes of the time. Uh, I, I, am a, I appreciate David and Kimberly and those of you who go in and mark the time that the lesson actually starts. Today, I think we started early. I think it was more like seven or eight minutes in. I'm not sure. But I actually started teaching pretty early because I was showing you a riff. Um, and so I usually will pin that comment because I often get comments, oh, would you shut up and get to the lesson already? <laughs> but with a live stream, a live stream is a completely different thing because I'm interacting. So the expectation is not very high for lesson to be start start right on time. Uh, so sometimes I don't get started for like 20 minutes. Um, but so if you miss the, yeah, so it'd be 2 p.m. your time. And, um, oh, and Potato, yeah, it's probably, you're in uh, England, I'm assuming. Um, so, yeah, and it's fine if you miss the first 20 minutes because I may not be teaching until 20 minutes in. And then I usually go to about the hour. So like, my time noon and then at noon I, I do story time or in this case we did an unboxing and I may have a couple more things coming I haven't I, I gotta I gotta get some more stuff I'm gonna try to spend some money to help the economy um because I and you know I'm always looking for weird instruments uh Bruce is building me a uh so I, I don't know when that's coming but Bruce will do an unboxing for that okay it's gonna be hard though because it's gonna show up and I'm gonna have to save it I don't know if I'm still gonna be doing this when you're done uh, so if I'm only doing one a week of these, then it might be tough for me. If you get it to me on a Monday, it might be hard for me to save it to Saturday to do uh, a live stream. Um, I may do a special live stream in that situation. I may have to call you first to let you know it's going to happen. But um, so we, uh, um, um, but and then I will talk and answer questions and tell stories and things like that. Maybe maybe as long as another hour after that. So I've definitely some of these have gone two, past two hours. But I really try to keep it to about an hour and a half if I can. Oh, Alan, 8 p.m. your time. So you're in, I think, Alan, you're in, are you in um, also in uh, uh, Holland? Or were you a little further, you're a little further east in Europe, I think. You're, are you in Germany? Um, oh, you're, uh, you're in New Jersey. Okay. Yep. Yep. I used to live in D.C. when I was a kid, Washington, and also uh, Philadelphia, outside of Philadelphia when I was a kid. I think I lived on the East Coast for about five years when I was, before I drove, so I couldn't really get around out there. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I say help the economy. <laughs> it's like, well, it's, it's the, what's the joke, the meme, uh, you know, as a guitar player, my greatest fear is that... When I die, my wife will sell all my guitars for what I told her I paid for them. 
<laughs> Which she knows. I don't. <laughs> I don't pay a lot for the guitars generally. I, you know, me. I, I paid ninety nine dollars for this one right here, and I just did a record. I did a record yesterday with it. So, and they loved it. And I'm like, ah, I'll just keep it to myself. <laughs> That's information they don't need to know. Um, so okay. Oh, oh, you're in Sweden. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So Sweden, yeah, is going to be in, um, is it Finland, Norway, Sweden? Dang it. I should know my geography. I apologize for being the stupid American. Um, let me look it up real quick. I, I, huh? So I was, I was wrong. Wait, here it is. Oh, just give me a, yeah, here we go. Norway, Sweden, Finland. Norway, Sweden, Finland. Okay, NSF. So I had Finland first and said Norway, Sweden. Yeah. I just, I was just telling you guys about um, Magical Places to Travel, which is one of the, wow, 9 p.m. So, Potato, where are you? You're further in, in you're, are you in uh, Russia? Or maybe, East, uh, like, uh, um, I want to go. We're, we're hoping to go to um, Hungary soon, Budapest and Prague. We want to go to Prague in um, Czech, the Czech Republic. Let's see. Um, yeah. So, so Sweden. Okay. Yeah. It's, that makes sense. Sweden would be an hour later than London. Um, yeah, it gets tough because I've got. Well, I, I haven't seen him in a while, but AB and uh, AB is in India, and he. Ha I saw him on the Discord. Oh, let me give a link to the Discord again, so you guys, if you're new and you haven't, um, where did I, do I not have Discord? Oh, man. Okay, here's the Discord. Um, boom, 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 boom. Copy link. Kathy, oh, Kathy texted me. Let me check and see what she said. Here's the invite for Discord, so feel free to do that. Kathy, what are you telling me here? Okay. Oh, I, yeah, I hope you're back to normal next week. I hope to, oh, Israel. Okay, awesome. I know exactly. Yeah, yeah. So that's about right. You're, you're, you're another one more time zone east of Sweden. That would make sense if I look at the map here. I can see. I've got a map of Europe in front of me here. Yeah. Yeah, you're, well, that's pretty far. You're, you're pretty far east. But again, the, the time zones are more along the parallel, the, the latitude and longitude thing stuff. So. Yeah, you're below the Ukraine, Belarus, yeah, Finland. Okay, very cool. Anyway, <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> plus two from London. Yeah, I, I always think minus eight from London. So yeah, you're ten ten ahead of us. So you eat dinner late then. Um, Uh, let's see, what was this? I can't tell you how much I've paid for my instruments. My kids just said, just put the selling price in the guitar cases so when, when I croak, they know how much to sell them for. Well, the thing is, my son is going to probably get all of my guitars, so uh, that will be uh, <laughs> a happy day for him <laughs> when I croak. All right, so listen, I'm going to take off. Thank you guys for watching. And uh, uh, I'll see you tomorrow, hopefully, Lord willing. And it'll be uh, same time, 11 o'clock my time. And we'll um, probably going to do the pentat. We're going to stick with the blues thing for a little bit. Um, maybe I'll come up with some different chords uh, if you want to go to the next level there. There's the, there's the Tom command sips that Gary's posting right now, so you can be um, aware of those. And I think today you guys got well hydrated. Because I was totally, yeah, totally, um, totally breaking all the rules. So, okay, see ya. Everybody take care. Bye-bye.